Good morning, class two. It's Amy Clarissa from Allegro Stitches. Today is May the 12th, 2021, and I'm here to give you an update with my May plans, May stitching, and also show you some smalls. Thanks first to Stitches of Sass, Jessica, and Pam from Stitching in the Land of Good Enough for the shout outs that I heard this week. So nice to be mentioned about fall off my chair, um, which is not good while you're sewing, but it was so fun to hear my name on the video. Yes, I am very new, Pam, and I'm in North Pole, Alaska, for those who missed that before. Uh, very far from most of you, yeah, I realize, but so nice to finally feel like I'm being part of the community. So hopefully I can continue to connect with you and uh, let me know if you want to see tutorials or more of something that I show. I've got a lot of different smalls to show today. As I was watching Floss Tube this week, I noticed people showing smalls again, and I thought that was kind of a thing of last year or a year and a half ago, the journals got really big and I just thought it was decided. People kind of knew what they were doing, but I've also heard that there are a lot of new people stitching. So the time has come around again to show what we do with our smalls. And I have lots of things to do with smalls. I, I don't like the idea of putting them in a book, gluing them down and never being able to do anything with them again except just look through the book. Um, I do have a book that I utilize, but I don't have like finished pieces in there. I'll get to that in a second. Um, I have lots of ideas. My mother always has lots of ideas for everything and how to do everything and other ways to do anything and everything. And I think that's where I get this. I kind of blame this on her, but it does come in useful sometimes. And let's see if I can do this without everything falling. There we go. This is one project that I decided to use smalls in and four and it's not quite done. I've got some of my fancy stickers on here. Um, initials. This is an Alaskan artist who does mosaic works. She also has some pins now and this obviously is one of her stickers. I have another one on the top right here, this Eskimo girl. I have a piece that I stitched. This is one of my smalls. This was my word of the year last year, friend. Oh, here's another one of her stickers really cute fox. This is from Etsy, the sculpt block. So are my initials and my great state and the Disney Descendants Galaxy. I don't remember exactly what that print was called, but it was something with Galaxy. And I just really like it. Those are my favorite colors. So the box I painted with chalk paint, it is I'm not exactly sure what it is or what it was in its former life. I worked for a cleaning company in college and my main job, the pediatric office, a couple miles away from our apartment. And this, when I found it, it was a terrible greenish ish color. <laughs> it wasn't really green. It was kind of a brown, but it was kind of a gray, sort of a green. Like it was just, it was terrible. And the inside was like a kind of velour or felt bright green and it was just terrible and it smelled awful and I think I think it had a stethoscope in it when I found it um, they had put it in the trash bucket and I went to take out the trash out that night and I was like what in the world this thing is heavy and so I looked inside and there was this box I went, oh. poor college student I was like I can do something with that box so <laughs> it got moved to Alaska and everything I spent I don't know how many hours scraping out that terrible green sticky felty interior and I finally decided to make a stitching box out of it so this is what I've done with it and what I keep in it um, this was my first venture into Mod Podge and <laughs> all the stuff on the top is there for a reason like it means something it's representative of someone or some experience or something um, this is my princess here Aurora Everyone told me I was an Aurora for years and years, and finally, I just decided to embrace it. So this is one of my fanciest, most expensive, and favorite, probably, needle minders of Aurora. It was a Disney pin, and I got this off Etsy, too. I never realized how much I shop on Etsy until I started making videos. It's amazing. Um, Amy Clarissa, obviously, that's my name. So that was from the couple of years where I tried to, pa to paper craft and... I had this brand new pack of letters and so I had enough A's to make my name and I 
figured it was a sign. So I put my name in there first, after the background, of course. And then I found this spirally sticker thing from Michaels and little birds. I think these were a Martha Stewart sticker pack. Um, scissors, of course, for crafting. This was another sticker thing from Michaels. It was a Recollections brand. And I think I had to put this in two pieces. The silvery part and then the lace was also a stickered thing. This little section is my brother's corner. Um, the motorcycle. He loved mo motorcycles. He had his favorite one was called Angel. And he had just ordered new handlebars and stuff for her. She was very outfitted. Um, completely wrecked in his crash. But there's a ruler. Life is not measured by the moments. Now I can't think of the quote. Um, mm -hmm. By the moments that take our breath away. That one. You know which one I'm talking about. A key. I don't remember exactly what quote I was thinking of when I put the key in there. I made this a couple of years ago. I have another key down here. The train is sitting on top of it. The train is for my son. He was into trains for forever. And he's kind of still into trains. <laughs> You'll see the Thomas Whip I'm working on for him in a minute. There's a little purple heart button here. That's representative of the Lego Stitches business. This little purple heart is on the back of all my needle minders. And then I have a purple spool of thread over here on the side. Heart, this is my um, family section. So love, heart, purple thread. That's for the three of us. It's growing. When I want to add something, I do. I put a sewing machine here recently. Sort of recently. I guess it was a little while ago now. And can just throw in changes I want it to so that's what I've got there no nothing on the side and then inside I keep like seam fix oh good it said it on the side so the one with the seam ripper and the rubber ends which you can also use a white eraser that's what we used before these things like were invented and you know floss bitties and this is where I keep I think it's like a little pill bottle storage. I'm not exactly sure. My sister got it for me. And that's where I keep my beading stuff. So I've got a needle minder with my two beading needles and then just paper because I didn't have anything for that compartment. So it just tells me what my needles are in case I forget. And then I've got the black Nymo, Nemo, Nymo, N-Y-M-O, I think it's how it was spelled, thread here. And then if I've got an extra length, it goes in there. And the white's on this side. So that's in here. Some nice lotion, hand cream, beauty cream, I use as a lotion, <laughs> headphones, some sort of a thread gloss. This is a unicorn thread gloss, which would be kind of similar to a Thread Heaven or is that the one they make or is that the one that was discontinued? I hardly ever use this, but these are really, really lovely scents. This is coconut caramel. I can actually smell these, which is uh, quite impressive if you know me more than just off TV, because I have a very terrible sense of smell. It's always been that way. I don't know life any differently, so it's not a big deal to me. But when I get something that I can smell, it's really strange and kind of nice and different. <laughs> like it's a different way to view the world. Um, those of you who have very sensitive senses of smell, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I can see how it would be very overwhelming. Anyway, side note. Um, sometimes I use this clip. This is also from Etsy, Purple Heart, um, you know why, and put it on scissors so that I don't lose it. So that's in here. I've got different needle tubes for 26s, 28s, and then I keep the ones that break. Um, usually when a needle goes bad for me, it's because the eye broke or because it's getting burrs in the eye and it just like keeps catching. Like if I've used it for metallics and then <laughs> didn't keep track of it and was trying to use cotton in there. It goes in a tube. And then I use them in projects sometimes. If you're supposed to stitch a needle, I'll just put a needle in there. New. You know, I'm recycling my needles. <laughs> and then I don't have to stitch the needle. Uh, this is like a... I'll have to ask Sarah. Is this water erasable or is this evaporating? It's one of those fabric marking pens. And I've got tweezers with a light in them. They don't want to come out, but there's a light. And it shows you where you're taking things out. I haven't had to use this. 
which is probably why it's still in the package. But mom got that for me and it's pink. I tried to go with a whole color scheme. So here are the things that I made for the bottom and I used smalls for. This was an empty spool, so I put a fabric on it. And then I stitched this. It's an ink circles design. I don't remember which one, I'm sure I wrote it down and which color I used and all those things. And then it's just got like a little, it's not a brad, eyelet here in the middle so I can put scissors in it, like so. Another scissor fob I made, not recently though, so it wasn't, it hasn't been in a video, but that is my scissor holder. And then I made, whoop, there we go, kind words never die. I think this was a heartstring sampler chart if I remember correctly. The colors are completely different. It does not look like the chart at all. Um, and then I made it into this little like box cushion pillow. Feels like there's half walnut shells and half uh, fluff in there. And then these pins I'd gotten, I think free with an order off Etsy. Pretty sure I didn't buy them, but I'm pretty sure they were from Etsy too. So I used that same color palette, um, matching it to the paper, right? from up here. So that was another thing I made. And then I also made this little jar to put hearts. This was a baby food jar from my son's earlier days. <laughs> I have a bunch of them and I just played around with it until I thought it looked okay. And that goes in here. And then I've got, you know, needle threader, tape measure, a couple extra needles. I also have my, um, Oh, what are those called where you pull in the end? Hold on, let's see if it says. Snag repair needles is what Clover calls them. They're stuck to the bottom because they're magnetic. And then I know where they are, so I just kind of dig them out if I need them, when I need them. Then I've got milliner eye needles for making French knots and some tapestry for doing um, hand sewing. All that's left to put in here are doll needles for doing biscornus and things that are thick with some dimension. I also made this corner gauge for the box. Just plain on the back, a sticker, and some of the paper. Yeah, so that's what's in my box. I also have a piece I haven't finished yet. I think I'm gonna make it into another needle minder. Um, stitched over one, it's like this big, you know, because I like to make them small. And I have a little tiny hoop. I was originally going to hang it in the box somewhere, but I don't think there's room. So either it's going to have to go on the outside like this friend's one. This was, I want to say Mimi Vidana. I don't know if that's true. This is a freebie though. Um, and I'm pretty sure I got it off Facebook. So if you want that, I can find it and try to link it for you. But uh, yeah, there will be another piece when I get around to finishing it. It's actually still in a project bag with all the colors I was using in case I decide to make anything else. We will see. We will see. Uh, what else do I do with smalls? Well, I showed you last week. Done some biscornu, and biscornu can be like a little pillow, pan cushion, scissor fob, um, ornament. It's very versatile. I love biscornu. I've gotten a couple of things from Sarah. I'm going to show you. I didn't ask her if I could show these. Hopefully, you're okay with this. Um, this beautiful beaded snowflake. She just backed it with some sticky felt sparkly because I like sparkly. She knows that. And then just put a magnet on it. Instant magnet. This is hanging by my calendar downstairs. I have it on a magnetic board. Our snow has finally melted, but it's so pretty. I love pink and purple and blue, obviously. I'm wearing blue again. And that's a quick, easy finish. Very effective. Very fun. Love it. Here's another thing she sent me. It's a small, but she found a small frame and it sits on my table downstairs. It doesn't sound like a big deal to you, but it's called Mommy's Table, and nobody puts anything on Mommy's Table. Yeah. So, a small frame. I think she said she got that at Michael's. Of course, classic pillow finish. This I got in my first and only swap. The first year I started stitching, and this is a great finish. It feels like it's just fluff that was being shipped, so... It could have been for weight reasons, and it could have been finisher's preferred method. I don't really know, but this has joined 
my bird and my doble. <laughs> I know. So now they're together and they're friends and this isn't just sitting downstairs on my shelf. I try to be themed. I'm not very good at it, but I'm trying. Um, this is from a different Sarah, my other Sarah pen pal. I call her Sarah L. I keep them separated. And it's just like a flat finish. This works really well for, um, I guess they're not really Michelle McGraw boards, but you know what I mean? Those boards with the clips on them, I think of Michelle McGraw whenever I see them. And she had sent me this one, hmm, November, October, September, December. I don't know, sometime last fall, what you guys would consider fall, when we had snow on the ground. And it's got a clip. Come on, buddy. Say hi. And I hi. just put this here. And then I have the fall one that came with this, and so I can switch them. This is like my springy, summery one. Sometimes I'll put a bow up there, and it's easy to change out. I can hear you. They can hear you. Okay. Um, it's easy to change out. It's simple, but it looks really cute. You can put a bow on it. I had this bow on it earlier, but it's not actually attached, so I knew it would fall off. I just said it like that. Yes. <laughs> if it's hard, I'm probably not going to do it. So, yeah, I just set it on the top like that, and it brightens up my spot downstairs. It's not difficult, but that way I get to see it and enjoy it, and I feel like I'm using what was made for me, or sometimes what I have made. Um, a card is also a great way to use a small. I think she just glued this right on here. This is another one from Sarah R. Sarah, R. yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Sarah. Yeah, this is her cat. This is Sarah R. And... I think it had two leaves here to balance out, but one fell off, and I never found it, so it's okay. It's still lovely, just like this. Obviously, this was from last fall when it was in season. She didn't send this to me recently, but I still have it out because I love to see the things people have made for me, and there's writing on the inside. It's a card. Oh, look, I just found the other little leaf. See? Told you there were two. Ta-da! <laughs> I guess I need to glue that back on. I don't think she used anything fancy. Um, it works great, and it's really nice to have. You know, easy to pin up, and you can see it. You can rotate them out just as easily as the board. I guess I could have just put this onto a board. Here's another board I have. I just I had this. Bought it just like this. Mm -hmm. Imagine. Um, I think it's from Fred's. Fred Meyer, a uh, Kroger type of store. Kind of similar to Walmart. If you're in the Northwest, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I know it's not like across the states though. So I guess if you wanted to put this on this board, you totally could. Just clip it right on there. Yeah, that would be so nice. Maybe I'll do that. i put a couple of my other smaller things. They wouldn't have to be finished to put them on a board. I know Michelle McGraw does um, ornaments and I have made a couple other things. I will try to put um, photos in the video. <laughs> I'm not sure how long that's going to take. Hopefully you see this before next Wednesday. Um, it's only 8 20 something in the morning right now, but it could take a while. So I have a couple of bags that I've put stitching on. This is one I did in January, maybe February, and I'm starting to keep my left leftover my additional thread organizers in here so I like those wooden round ones that I showed you yeah I'm gonna keep them in here this I made from a berry birdie pattern again if you're interested I can find it and link it um, but I've also made another bag and I gifted them to the Sarah's and it had like a medallion with a pumpkin hopefully a photo here and I did, for their birthdays, Altoy Tin Toppers. Those are a little more work, so that's for their birthday gifts. Um, one Sarah's had flamingos on it. And the other one was a birthday cake, more pastel and girly. Really, really pretty. Was for last November. And then I've made some ornaments, too. Uh, gifts, you know. Nothing that I'm keeping. Why don't I keep these things? work on these beautiful finishes and then I don't keep them. But smalls make great ornaments. Hopefully I can find the photos. I've made them bookmarks. Gilmore Girls themed. And there was another one. Oh, I did paw prints in her name. Both Sarah's. So here's the other one. 
and see stitching box, Viscornia's pillows, cards, books, marks, notebook cover, notebook cover. Yes, I did this design three different colorways, two different sizes. This is the tiny one, but I did not need to keep all of those <laughs> different finishes. So one of them I turned into a notebook cover. And actually, if you see, if you see, if you watch Joyfield Stitcher, Annie, it was a little notebook cover that I finished it into and sent it to her because it reminded me of her so much. So if I can find a picture of that, put that here. Dog Metallion Needle Minder Altoid Tin Needle Minder. Aha! Almost skipped right over that. I actually made the needle minder to match the Altoid Tin with the flamingos on it. That chart is by Hands On Design. A lot of you will recognize it. And I think I took that medallion from one of the fobs that was included in the chart. Or maybe just a part, a portion of that chart. Probably. That's how I got the ink circles designed too. I just used a center portion. Hopefully I can find that. I did it the covered button style. Turned out really cute. Uh, one over one on 28 count. Framed clipped ornaments magnets. Yeah, okay. I think that's enough for now. And of course, doble is a great way to display if you have little pillows or biscornus or small things that, you know, kind of too small to clip to a uh, Michelle McGraw board. So I just renamed that as the Michelle McGraw board now. <laughs> All right, what did I work on this week? I worked on Thomas book bag. There is another photo inside, but let's just use this. It's so much easier. And I got the blue in the top done. Maybe a little bit more of the tracks. I don't exactly remember where this was last week. I worked on it Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Progress is not quick on this. It's not difficult, but it's not quick. And you do want to use a thimble. Um, thimbles. I have tried so many different kinds of thimbles. For this, I like, I think it's a clover. It's green, so probably clover. It's, well, it's not a great finger to just show as one finger, but I think this is a medium, and that's why I have to wear it on the middle. Um, I have found thimbles usually just slide right off my finger, so I need to start buying smalls, I guess. And then this, I think, was called the nimble thimble. I picked this up when we were out of state. It's got a place for a nail, which I never have. I'm a musician. And it's got like a metal plate right here. So I tend to favor this one. It's a little more like fitted to my finger. As you wear it, it comes more, you know, kind of shapes to the shape of your finger. And this is just plastic, but it still fits pretty well. Um, I wish I could wear them on three and four, but it just, it's no good on four. <laughs> so um, either I'm gonna have to invest in a small thimble or just, Keep doing what I'm doing and make it through with the medium. And then I have to use a pointy, sharp, I call this my mouse spear. Very pointy. Got a decent size eye. I don't know where I found this needle, but it, it's like a little mouse sword. So you have to use a thimble and it does not go fast. But it's going well and I did make progress and so I'm happy with it. I just wish I had gone further. And that's Tom's progress. Then Friday and Saturday, I worked on Chessie and Me's Miss Nettie's Needle Usefuls. I don't know what drew me to this chart. This is not usually my style, and you'll see I've completely changed this front part. Yes, I have, but I really like the back. That's probably what, what got me. And actually, no, because you're seeing it reversed. Yeah, okay, never mind. Had I seen it like this a long time ago, I would have made this the front and this the back. But, you know, good reverse imaging wasn't helping me out back then. So, the girl's on the front, and I got a lot done on the back. Thank you to whoever it was. Oh, I should have written down your name. I'm sorry. That said to put a four-inch strip of muslin. I just found a four-inch scrap of fabric or five-inch. I'm not really sure. It's probably more like five-inch. And just sewed it on, put it in the snap. It was so much easier to work on. So much easier. And I got a lot done in two days. A lot more than I thought I would get done. So I had the front all done. And see, like I said, I changed it. I put the little scissor fob with the spool and the cat in my main piece. And 
I don't remember what all I've changed now. I know I changed the colors because everything has to have purple in it. But this weekend, I had the numbers and I had this first line of alphabet. So I put in all the rest of the alphabet and the entire wreath and then started working on the border. I was so impressed with myself. That is a lot for me. So it went really, really well, so much more quickly than the Thomas. Maybe that's why it felt like it was so fast. But this is 36 count linen. I want to say it's Weigart linen. It was just a cream that had been sent to me from, sounds like it was a freebie. It was not a freebie. I bought from Threads Entwined, I think. And I dyed it. And it's a little darker than I wanted it to be. But everyone says in the dyeing tutorials, it dyes lighter, it dyes lighter, it dyes lighter. I did not dye lighter. And by dye lighter, I mean dry lighter. Can't you read my mind? No, I'm sorry. Um, they say it dries lighter, dries lighter, dries lighter. But not dry lighter. Oh, well. Live and learn. I'm doing a lot of that lately. A lot of living, a lot of learning. All right. So that finished my whip week. And this week I've been doing Stitch Sania. So my Stitch Sania piece is Little Sheep Virtues with Little Sheep in the Meadow in the center, which this is the one I'd already done. Basically, I'm doing the sheep at the end. Some sheep are going to be all white. Some are going to be like this with the white fluff and black head and legs and ears. Some of them are going to be brown. Some of them are going to be black. I want a mix of sheep. So I'm doing the sheep at the end when I can kind of black, 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 white, 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 and spread them out. That's how I do all my designing. Um, quilting, which, surprise, <laughs> I do some of that too. And when I kind of design my own charts or work on placement, layout stuff, yeah, I like to color it out. And I'm not a great artist. If you know the sheep virtues, maybe you can tell which one's which. If not, it's okay. I don't feel bad. <laughs> not a great artist. Um, this is faith. <laughs> this is joyfulness. This is wisdom. Courage. Simplicity. Friendship. It's amazing how much when you work with them you get to like recognize them just by their frame or by one image. That's love. I know. It's amazing. But I made pretty good progress on this. I should have taken it out of the snap. Oh well. This one is hard to see anyway. It's, oh there you go. It's light pink and yellow. And then I put in this one right here and I'm working on, it's what I call inner border. And then all the inner borders are inspired by what the original chart had. So the framework is mine. That one's white, this is blue but the inner borders are inspired by the original. So this is joyfulness. I have all the charts here. Listen as I look for them. There we go. Joyfulness has kind of a red. You guys know I don't love red, but see that inner border? It's got like a white and then the pink, well, mine are more pink, red triangles that come out into the center design. So. That's what I'm mimicking here. And it had kind of medallions in the corners. See that? Those look medallions. Oh, look, everything is in plastic. I don't realize how much is in plastic until you start recording. So I mimicked those medallions in the corners where it made sense, of course, because everything is linked together and it doesn't make sense to do the entire thing as medallion. But I modified it so it fits my framework and it's going really well. Uh, this was Patience. I think it's the one with the big blue flower. Where's Patience? I'm going to show you how I do this right here. Patience I just changed. This is not a good example at all. Because when I put everything together, I moved them. I think this was the Pat Carson layout. So it says like number one, number two, number three, number four. I pay no attention to that. I put them in the order I wanted them. I don't have to wait for them to be released. I'm doing what I want. So on this one, it said to use yellow and blue. I didn't want to use blue because across the piece, straight across, 
look at all that blue. I was not using blue again. That's a lot of blue. I needed to balance out my yellow, so I did yellow and pink. So three is a good number for designing. You know, odd numbers are good for designing, you know, about color and color theory and all that stuff. So pink, I'm going to do pink, pink, and then it's like up here is the other pink. And so I'm doing the same thing with the blues and green and all those different colors. So this is how this came to be colored. And this came to be yellow and pink. Some of them are nice and light. Some of them are a little bit darker. Courage was supposed to have, I want to say brown and yellow. And I just took the style and I changed it to two different yellows. And that's how I come up with that border. I can show you all of these. I don't know how interesting this is to you guys. I'm so used to people being like, yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> Not interested at all. Well, I can take a little more time, but I don't want to bore you guys to death either. Um, this was from Simplicity. So I try to do the same kind of thing for Simplicity. And just draw inspiration for all of them from the original. Last one, of course. So Simplicity, yeah, okay, I see how I got that. It's supposed to be orange and green. Not doing orange and green. So I decided pink and purple. It was my first one, bottom center. I've been working from the center out center out. So I started in a center. Simplicity is my bottom center. And instead of doing this white here, I did light pink. And then instead of changing colors and doing the um, orange and green, and they had been alternated, you know, orange and green, then orange and green, orange and green, orange and green. I just made it pink and purple because I felt like it at that time. So I drew inspiration from here. This one's kind of loosely interpreted, just like the last one. And some are more closely related to the original, like joyfulness was. You know, it's mine. I can do what I want. <laughs> um, hopefully, I can get this finished tonight. I need, I want it filled in, too. And if I get it filled in, I really need to work on my June Pal start for one of the Sarahs. If it doesn't get done, I don't know when I'll put that in my schedule because May is booked. And I'm not used to that kind of structured, not layout, setup. Like having every single day of a month planned. Usually I have about half of a month planned and then the other half I can do whatever I want. So there's no wiggle room this month. I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to put that in if I can't put it on Thursday. But we'll play by ear. Hopefully I'll get it done this month. I know it's not June. I just... I like to work ahead <laughs> and not stitch things in the month I actually need them. Okay. That's Little Sheep Virtues. Making progress on that. If I get the block filled in, minus the sheep, I'm doing those at the end, then I will start the Bunny to Score New. I misspoke when I showed this the first time. This is by Joan Elliott. I would have read the chart. Joan Elliott. Not Doreen Jones. It's got a back. It's got a front. I will be starting with the front. Look how cute they are. Oh, so, so cute. And I love the scornies. I already know that. So I pulled fabric and beads. I forgot the floss. So that's another thing I have to do. But if I get my senior goal met by the end of Thursday, I will start by the scornies. And then on Monday, not Monday, Sunday comes before Monday, Sunday, I'm planning on starting Needlebook Kit, regardless of what has happened the same week, because Sunday starts my traditional mania week. New start every day. <laughs> That's going to be nuts. <laughs> Needlebook Kit, this is for Sunday's start. Thank you to two martini stitcher. And it's good to see you again. I'm so glad you're back for this lovely little win, originally from the World of Cross Stitch magazine. I've taken all the fabrics out and zigzag them because praying fabric drives me crazy. So if you notice that, eagle eyes. Um, yes, I did do that this week. This lovely Just Nan, Just Nan kit called Butterfly Lace will be for Monday. Checking my notes. Don't want to get this off. Life is beautiful kit. Yeah, I don't know what this is actually called, but it's going to be amazing. I love doing these. I did one of these last... April, May, something like that. Around this time last year, I did one of these. 
and I loved it. So this is from Request to Come, and I think I forgot to link this when I showed it before. It's an Etsy site. Mm, yeah, aren't you surprised? So stitchable piece is in there. I can't wait to do this. Um, it is very helpful when stitching on these wooden things. I think they also have ornaments that are wooden, right, and stitchable. Use a hemostat. Just do it. It's so much easier on your fingers. You'll wish you hadn't. Wish you had if you don't. It's about time to end the video. All right, and here we go. Wednesday. Isn't this one cute? Yeah, this sold really fast. This is the last one. I'm keeping it. Sorry. Um, this is the black cat bob. So you make the cat and his little crinic um, frame, and then you make him a tail. I have the crinic quarter, so I'll use that. You make him a tail, and that becomes the like string that you would attach to your scissors. He is so cute. He would also just make a really cute little pincushion. We'll see which way I finish him, but that's all I need. The fabric, the crinic, the black. That one was super easy to kit. Oh, and good thing I put this here. There was someone who would like to stitch the heart. I completely forgot about this. Good thing I put it in the pile. I will comment on your comments and ask for your address and get this in the mail to you. So glad I found someone who wants to stitch that. And thank you to Danita for sending it with the beads. That was very sweet of you. Oh, <laughs> a couple other things. I almost forgot. Um, I didn't make all those smalls this week, but I did get a couple finishes. Sort of. <laughs> I'm working on stuff for the shop. Needle minders are going well. I think I finally figured out how to pour a nice base for them. And then I've got a really beautiful topping for them. Of course, the sticky surface, all this stuff is secret, so I can't tell you what I'm using. It's taking a while to develop it, but it's coming along really nicely. One of the supplies didn't come in yet, and so it's going to be another week before they can get in the shop, unfortunately. But progress is being made. They are looking good. I can't quite show them to you, but they will be available shortly. Another thing I'm working on is little kitted up pouches. These guys right here. Love these. Love them so much. I use them for uh, a lot of things. <clears throat> Let's just say I have like 30 some. Mm -hmm. I have a lot. So I am working on this coffee print. Inside will be coffee beans. This is what I've got going right now. There will be more. This is the batch that will probably show up next weekend because I have a lot to do this week. This is a blackbird print. I found this when I was looking for a coordinate to this fabulous Americana print. It's by Blackbird Designs. I didn't even know I had any of that. That's so cool. I think it looks like the amber waves of grain. And I was so happy there will only be four of these. I only had enough fabric for four. But it's going to be fabulous. Oh, I'm so excited for that one. More coffee. Like, let's just show you back in front. That's going to be easier. So, like, old coffee signs. Coffee beans, coffee beans and coffee. Yes, this could go either way. I think I'm gonna do it this way though because I really see them sitting right side up. Lilo and Stitch, and it's got a, like a nice oceany wave type print. I call all these, yes I do, on my machine, right here at home. This is like a nice metallic silver. This is a cotton and steel print with these cute little pandas. Oh, they're so cute, I might have to keep one of these. Here's another patriotic one, puppies. I'm trying to get more animals. This is a glitter. I think it's the only glitter this batch. Um, but we've got these cute little patriotic puppies. Paw prints and stars. And then if you're feeling more adventurous, then just, whoops, that needs trimmed. That thread will get trimmed, I promise. Oh, not black and white. Ba bam look at those rainbow pups. Aren't they fun? So. Pride Month, I guess. June, that would work. Or if you just like rainbows, super fun. I also have a version of that with cats. I know there are lots of cat people and lots of dog people. Look how cute she is. Alice, obviously. And keeping it a little bit mad in the middle, we've got Technically, you call it sideways, but really, is this up or is this up? So it goes this way. Alice, 
and flamingos. Super fun. I'm keeping one of these. I can't let all of these sell. I know she's Cinderella. I should do it this way. I'll get finished that way. And I tried so hard to find blue that would match her. Couldn't find it, but this pink is perfect. Perfect. So, pink it is. I also found in my pinks looking for something suitable. Look at these cows! I know, I completely forgot I had these cows. The Moo the Merrier, right? From Expo. And then I had a request for more breast cancer. So it's going to be really pretty and pink. And then one more patriotic because I found these cute gnomes. I know. I'm not really a gnome person, but they're just so cute. A nice bright red. Kind of looks like stars. I think technically it's flowers, but 4th of July is our summer. So I went ahead and sprung for the bright red. It's just so cute. <laughs> so cute. All right. And then I put together a quilt top. I will not go into details as why that got done this week, but if you want to see the quilt, hang on for a minute. If you want to skip over the quilt and see my book of smalls that haven't been finished yet, just skip forward a minute or two. I don't know how I'm going to get this whole thing to fit in the frame. <laughs> it is way too big to show. Way, way, way too big to show. Okay, this was a bad idea. Let's see if I can get you the center. There we go. There's the center. And then it kind of radiates out and out and out. It's queen size. What did I think? I was going to fit it all into this much space. That's ridiculous. I was just so excited. It's been a long time since I've put a quilt top together. This is the, I want to call it butterflies and berries line. I also want to say it's Riley Blake. I have no clue if that's correct. But if you have to know, I'm sure I could find it in online receipts or something. But I think it was called Butterflies and Blooms. And it's just red, white, pink, and aqua. This is the Hope pattern from GE Designs that was released again about a year ago. What can I say? Time to finish projects, that, not just cross-stitching projects. Time to finish all the projects. Hopefully, I'll be getting some finishing of these done soon. And you know what? I just realized it's 42 minutes and 50 seconds. So my little device here is going to cut me off very soon. I do not have time to show you this. So I will just give you a quick preview for next week. Oh, it looked like it just cut me off. Okay. Well, if I'm still going, here are some of the things that I have finished. And this is just how I store them until I actually finish them. So we're going to flip a few pages at a time here, give you a quick little preview. I got to finish that, don't I? Fourth of July is coming up. So it's Memorial Day and all of the, whoops, there's one. There's a couple blank pages in here because when I take something out and finish it, sometimes that page gets skipped when I put new things in. All right, one more wedding sampler. There we go. Yep. So this is how I keep them until they get finished. I will do a flip through of this next week. Yes, promise. All right. Hopefully I get those photos added in decent time. And you can see this Wednesday night, Thursday morning, something like that. I know for most of you, it's noon, if not later on Wednesday already. So for me, it's going on 9 a.m. I need to wrap this up, get school for Danny done and the living room picked up, Stephen off to work like all of the Wednesday things because I have lessons all afternoon. So hopefully this was helpful, informative, and fun. I will see you next Wednesday. Bye, Floss Tube.